What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. How you doing today? It's an absolutely beautiful day here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And I'm out in the fruit forest now doing some work on some of the fruit trees. So I wanted to bring you all along because I think it's valuable. I think you might enjoy it. Let's go. As we take a look into the fruit forest, we can see that fall has really taken effect on it. And a lot of the leaves have dropped to the ground already. Just like in a natural forest, the deciduous trees dropping the leaves to the ground in layers. That's how we use the wood chips. We make sure we always do it in layers. We don't mix it into the soil. That's not what we're talking about today though. Today we're gonna to be talking about these cracks you see in the trees, the splitting, and how we can prevent that in the future and how we can make sure that doesn't get any worse. So right next to me here is the Santa Rosa plum that I just showed you up close. I showed you some of the splitting and cracking here in the bark. And that happens mainly from two things, sunburn and sun scald. So sunburn happens in the summer. When it's super hot, you've got the hot sun beating down on it. Well, that's mainly when it happens. And it dries out the bark, it causes the splitting. This is something that can be prevented. And I haven't done it as much in the past, but I'm gonna be doing it this year. And that's what I'm showing you now. And the other issue is sun scald, where you can get this cracking. The sun scald happens like in the winter time when you have, you know, you're in the cold uh, season and the tree's really cold. And then you have a hot day, a hot spell, and it heats up the bark really quick. That can cause a cracking and splitting also. So we're gonna put a little something on this to help prevent it. So what we're going to use to prevent this from happening in the future again, to prevent this sun scald, this sunburn, and from getting worse, is actually the same thing that's gonna serve multiple functions because it's gonna actually protect this because now that the tree is open like this, we're gonna have different kinds of bugs and borers trying to get in here and lay their nests and stuff, so we don't want that to happen. So we've got a product that's actually all organic, all natural, that's gonna also prevent that. Another thing it's gonna do is prevent rodents from biting at the bottom and eating at any open areas we have. Some of you might notice, but the technique I'm doing today, it's more hands-on than what I usually do. And I'm gonna be doing this stuff more in the future, I talked about it, how I wanna get out here more, do what I can to get the best harvests. And what I learned today, I learned from a friend, Jake. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel, Raw Utah, and he's had a food forest for 10 years. So he's been doing it longer than I have. And experience in this stuff is so important. Reminds me of Bill Mollison. He had an interview, him and Jeff Lawton. And in the interview, someone asked Jeff Lawton, they said, Jeff, are you a better teacher than Bill? And Jeff says, no, and I never will be. He said, because the longer you've been thinking about this, about permaculture, the longer you've been doing it, thinking about it, the more you realize that you don't know. I thought that was just such a profound statement. And then after that, Bill says, and he knows actually the least about it. So you think about it, it's kind of like, it messes with your head a little bit, but you have to just have that, that mindset in my, my opinion. Always a student. You can be the teacher sometimes, but you have to make sure you're still a student. So what we're gonna do is actually paint our trees with this right here. And you may have seen a technique before where people use latex paint. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but this is what I'm gonna be using because it's all natural. It's all organic, and it's actually not white. This one's actually brown. So let me pop this open. This comes dried like this, and then there's an oil also to mix in down here. I'm not gonna show you just exactly how I'm doing this because this isn't a product ad or anything. I have no affiliation with this company. This is just a natural version of, you see, of what you see a lot of people doing with latex paint. So we got all the powder added. I'm just gonna add some water. And I'm gonna make it relatively thick to start so I can fill in some of the some of the bigger gaps. Baby, I asked you not to keep me waiting. I told you not to keep me waiting. So we got that mixed up. Now, the now let's start adding to the trees. Waiting. So where you see the splitting down here, we're gonna come and paint this. Make sure it's nice and thick and get it all covered. We don't want to be shy with it. And I chose the brown because I just like that natural color more. I don't want to look out into the garden and just see white at the bottom of all my trees, even though white is actually the better choice. Here's a spot that really needs it on these cherry trees. So I think this is really going to help. Going to make sure we really glob it in there nice and thick. can't afford a natural product like this, but you still want to help put something preventative on your trees, you can use latex paint. An interior paint is actually what they prefer. 
And I've read about a 50-50 mix of latex paint and water. So that's not something I want to use or do, but that's just up to you. And this also comes in white if you want. And I said that like, I don't really want white, at least right now, because I don't want to look out at my trees and just have that look super unnatural. The brown I think is okay. It's a, it's a decent step for me. But the white helps a lot because it, it's reflective. So when that sunlight comes in, instead of just building up that heat, like something black does, absorbing it, the white reflects it. That's why the white version of this may be even a little better if you're up for that. But a reason I like this compared to like a latex paint is because this also has some oils in it. It's got clove oil and cinnamon oil and a number of different kinds of oils. What these are gonna do is prevent the bugs from coming in because they hate this stuff. And another thing it has is actually castor oil. So the castor oil is actually made from the castor seed tree and it stinks. It, well, it doesn't stink, it makes everything taste bad. It actually smells really good, but it makes things taste bad. So the bugs and the rodents, not the bugs, but the rodents, like your uh, moles, your voles, your rabbits, they're not gonna wanna bite on your bark and stuff, especially for your younger trees. That's one of the reasons I'm really making this video for all you that have young trees. I'm gonna move into the new food forest now and get some of those painted up. So right here is a new peach tree that I just planted last spring doing real well. And this is a planted from bare root, a disease resistant Avalon pride peach, good variety. Tuck says it's good, he's checking on it. Bunch of strawberries underneath. Now we're gonna do some painting on some of the areas that look like they could become issues. We've got a little spider up there watching too, taking care of the tree. We don't wanna paint him. So we're just gonna mix this up a little bit cause you wanna make sure you mix this stuff every five or 10 minutes or so. And then we're just gonna paint on some of those locations that look like they're gonna be issues. Especially when this tree is young and we don't have to use a lot of this paint. And one thing that's important to note is, obviously the south is gonna be some of the worst area of the tree for this sunburn because that's where it just gets hit directly. So anything, any holes, any exposed spots that you do have, you might wanna cover up. That's what we're gonna do. It's gonna keep a lot of the issues away. Again, preventative, staying on top of issues rather than dealing with them if they come. I've got most of the trees painted now in the new food forest and they're looking real well. I've noticed that it's mostly the stone fruits that get the issues. So the plums seem to be the worst. Some of the peaches are pretty bad too, and some of the cherries. It looks like the chickens have snuck into the new food forest, eating up a bunch of the radish greens, loving the fresh stuff. This kale blew over in a nor'easter we had, and I didn't bring guys along for that, but the winds were insane. I gotta get these chickens out of here though, because they'll tear everything up real quick. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. And the more I get into growing food, fruit trees, perennials, all this kind of stuff, food forestry, the more I realize it, it's so much just about investing. So getting a good food forest started, it's about getting the ground good, investing in the soil, getting the wood chips, layering it. It's also about getting the right varieties, buying you know the bare root trees, high quality from reputable companies, good varieties, and it's also about protecting them, doing things that you can you know, naturally to do preventative measures and just guiding them along. So I think it's like, it's not just about going out and buying a cheap tree for $5. You may get a result out of that sometimes, but I want to set up a scenario where I can be successful as many times as possible. So I hope you guys are the same. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to check us out and steam it. We're always posted on there. James Prigioni back at you real soon with another update. We out.